back here to the Pokemon Orlando Regional Championships. So many great matches today, and now we're just two more matches away from finding out who our regional champion is going to be. I know. We had one amazing top four match just happen. We've got one more, and of course, the Masters Finals. And what's even more exciting is that this is Series 2. This is the first regional champion for Series 2, and we're already setting the pace for how the metagame is going to shape up for the next few events. Yeah, honestly, that's the one thing about the first regional of a series is Everyone else is kind of like the test guinea pigs out here, and you're sitting there, you're planning for OCIC, you have your flight booked, and you're like, okay, this Parish song, it's pretty good. I need to be it or beat it, you know? <laughs> Anything like that. No, for sure. It's like, what is it, the old saying, if you can't beat it, join it kind of deal? Uh, you know, but I think it's really tough because Parish Song, Parish Trap, still a very positionally focused game plan, and you could prepare for it and still not be able to get the pieces on the board in the right way to be able to deal with it. But I still think that there are some incredibly strong archetypes that we have left. And spoiler alert, everybody, we have a Don Dozo mirror coming at you next. Uh, for our second top four match between Ashton and Chuppa. There's someone in chat right now like, no, who picked this? The Don Dozo, the players picked we it. Didn't, they we did, didn't have a choice they, here. They did so good that they made it to top four. So yes, you're going to sit through another mirror. But it's really interesting because the thing is, is the Don Dozo Tatsugiri combo that these teams have, there's a lot of changes going into each team not even just within the Don Dozo Tatsugiri and how they're built, but the partner Pokemon that they have around them. Yeah, there's so many interesting things to talk about for this matchup, and I really do want to focus on the Don Dozo and the Tatsugiri together because I feel like that's the pair that everybody has their eyes on when just looking at this matchup straight away. It's very hard to miss that those Pokemon are on this team, but the sets, the items, and even the Tatsugiri themselves are a bit different from team to team. Uh, one of the things that I'd really like to call out is just the fact that the Don Dozo on Chuppa's team, it does have the order up with the curly form Tatsugiri, so you're able to get those attack boosts. On the other side of things, though, with Ashton's team, we saw that there is the droopy form Tatsugiri, but there's no order up on the Don Dozo. So it's not actually getting to be able to use those defense boosts. It's also still not the Tatsugiri that we would have typically expected to see. It's usually stretchy or curly, but it's still cool to see nonetheless. Yeah, since the Tatsugiri doesn't matter, we get to have the coolest, objectively coolest one of them all because we don't really get to see it that often. <laughs> and the lack of order up means that there can be a different move used. This case, the rest paired up with that Chesto Berry. So then the Don Dozo can have a bit more longevity, which is a scary thing to talk about but when we're looking at a Don Dozo uh, face-off for these two <laughs> players, but just the differences in how they're being built, this is really going to make it so that there can't be the order up attack stacks, on, at least on Ashton's end. And I love that you bring up that the there is an option for recovering HP here. I think that Ashton has a little bit more of a sure way to do that when you do have the rest in the chest berry on top, right? Just go to sleep, regain your HP, wake back up. But Chuppa, as we saw from his previous top 32 match, went with a little bit more of that long game plan, had the leftovers instead. You have the substitute as well, and you can rotate through sub protect and that leftovers healing to be able to build back up your Pokemon. But there's some other really interesting pieces here. What stands out to you from Chuppa's team that you feel like is going to be a really important Pokemon here? So it has to be the same thing that we got to see in San Diego. The thing that he would take to the finals <laughs> that time around, the Palmet with the Revival Blessing. We even got to see earlier that being able to revive that Tatsugiri to make it sure that you can have that Dondozo Tatsugiri combination when it was the mirror and you were able to oh so importantly take down the Tatsugiri, Tatsugiri on the opponent's end. So being able to have little things like that is just so nice. But Ashen, I mean, it's been a lot of competition and I feel like Dondozo players they have to have a, some sort of plan or idea of what they want to be doing up against opposing Don Dozo players. And the fact that we've been seeing Palmet around, you have to have a game plan for that too. Absolutely. I mean, the Terra Electric double shock damage was astounding coming out from Chuppa's team. So that's going to put a lot of pressure onto the Don Dozo on Ashton's side, unless you force it to terastalize. In which case, maybe it'll be able to, to deal with that a little bit better with that steel typing. But you also have Roaring Moon that's going to be a bit more vulnerable 
to that type of damage as well. Um, but there's also some other key pieces on Chuppa's team that I think makes this matchup just a little bit tougher for Ashton to navigate. Namely, I'm looking at that Talonflame. I know you love that Pokemon. We talked about it at top of show as well, but it's the Taunt and the Will-O-Wisp that I feel like is going to be critical for being able to shut down some of the more utility moves that Ashton has. I'm looking at Dondozo not being able to deal with, you know, substitute rest. Ashton would have that shut down and then just kind of some of the other options too on the Brute Bonnet since Talonflame is not a prankster user that Taunt will be able to go through for shutting off the Protect and Spore. And Talonflame, I feel like, is just so good into Dondozos in general because not only are you mitigating the amount of attack that this Dondo is going to be able to have, the damage it does to you, you also mitigate the leftovers recovery. So when it is something that, you know, you're trying to recover, you're trying to make sure you can hide behind a substitute and a protect, you're able to burn that off, which can be so nice to just make sure that the Dondozo can't be sitting and really stalling you out for too long. And despite the fact that there is the Dondozo with, you know, substitute over on Ashton's end, the rest and Chesto Berry combo is a one-time use. Yes, you can rest multiple times if you really want to, but you're only waking up immediately once. Yeah, absolutely. I think that the way that Ashton's going to really be able to go around this is, you know, is he going to be able to get the rest off if he does bring in the Dondozo? But also, how do you play around the Talonflame? A couple of things that stand out to me is the fact that we've got a Choice Specs Golden Go on Ashton's side that is packing that Thunderbolt. So not only are you going to be able to do super effective damage to the Talonflame and the Dondozo, but that's a really great way to be able to just ensure some damage as well. I mean, on the flip side of things too, looking at Chuppa's team, you also have a Choice Specs Golden Go that's rocking that Thunderbolt too. So two sides of the coin, who brings what? How do they decide to play around this sort of mirror? Well, I think there's only way to find one way to find out. And we have to give respect to the Golden Ghost too, because at the same time, yeah, the Donto is attached to Geary, but Ashton even said there is more to the team. And there it is, the Golden Goat to start things off next to the Brute Bonnet and both players bringing the Golden Boy. It's going to be paired next to the Iron Hands on Ashton's end. Yeah, so this is the, something that I was really excited to see come out from Ashton. Iron Hands does have access to that fake out. So if you were a little bit worried about maybe the Talon Flame coming through, you could at least fake it out to be able to shut off something like the Taunt or the will o coming through for the first turn. But Ashton right now is going to be a bit on bar time if he does have that Tatsugiri and that Dondozo in the back. You're really trying to push out as much offensive pressure as possible, looking at what Chuppa also has on the board. Also, how are these Golden Go trained? That's going to be really important to figure out for these next few games. Though I feel like a lot of players, I feel like just making sure that they're hitting hard because that's kind of the whole point of the C-string out there being able to go for those super strong make it rain and going to be even stronger thanks to the help of the terrestrialization into the steel type, purely steel type. So you're hitting for a lot of damage, but both players want to terrestrialize first turn. We'll then go on the other side as well. Another steel terror type, who would have guessed? <laughs> I mean, it makes like for a really great terrestrializing target just to be able to sh shore up some of those weaknesses, especially when you shut off the Shadow Ball, uh, super effective damage as well. That's gonna feel really good, but the special defense prop might hurt here. It might though. I don't think it would survive another round anyways, but make it rain in return. That is also a resisted hit from the Golden Go on the other side, but still just dealing so much damage. The Brute on it though, being brought down to about a third of its health, will get a chance to go for that Citrus Berry, bringing it just about half. But a close combat to follow up, well, Brute Bonnet's not going to appreciate that too much. That is going to be a KO. Big knockout here. I mean, that does remove Chuppa's ability to go for things like the Rage Powder to keep a Pokemon safe, the Spore as well, so be able to put something to sleep. Um, and so you're really relying on whatever type of supportive Pokemon you have in the back. And so we're about to find out what Chuppa has decided to bring here. And it looks like it's the Dondozo for that third Pokemon. In fact, there's a couple of different modes that these players could be going for. There's always the, you know, hey, we're not the player. We don't know exactly which ones they want to be bringing. We do have a little bit of insider info on one of the switches, but not quite both. But 
Don Dozo on the other side, and now getting a peek to see that the Tatsugiri Don Dozo is on Ash's end as well. Looks like both players have the same idea about how they want to be ending off this game, especially with the Golden Go switching out, bringing in that Tatsugiri for the Commander. All right, so we're going to see the Commander go off here, and another really important call out to make is that the Golden Go on Chuppa's side is going to be preserved for later. So you do get the ability to reset what move you've selected with the choice specs, and knowing that Shadow Ball is not going to be doing too much to any of the Pokemon that are on Ashen's side, you'd like to be able to preserve that to maybe go for a Make It Rain later with the Steel Typing, or go for something like the Thunderbolt, as we see another Dondozo. Dondozo light at this point, because it doesn't have the Commander Boost and the Tatsugiri yet, but it's definitely not light in terms of the bulk and just the capability of taking that wave crash. Now it's just going to be an attack that would have been into that Tatsugiri slot, but because of the fact that it is hidden safely inside the Dondozo, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, so Iron Hands here, maybe looking for an opportunity to switch. Uh, you definitely could go for just the, the safe switch there, which is what we're going to see come through from Ashton so far. But you do have Volt Switch available too if you wanted to try to get some damage off before. But I think this is way safer. You want to make sure that your Dondozo is getting set up here as quickly as possible. So we're going to see just that raw switch. Yeah, there's definitely some times where shenanigans can happen to where all of a sudden you can't get that bolt switch off if there's a protect on the other end. So just going for the hard swap in this case, you make sure that you can get the Don Dozo set up. Make sure you have the boost anything else and just can try and be good going up Ooh. here and going for this as well. There's nothing to target into that slot, so Tatsugiri gets away scot-free, and now Ashton gets the substitute. So the substitute's really nice here, but Chuppa still gets the attack boost despite the fact that the order up missed its target. Mm -hmm. So while you would have really liked to have knocked out the Tatsugiri there, of course, it's going to be able to get the commander boost and become invulnerable, but the Don Dozo on Chuppa's side has been set up for a lot of success here. It's at full HP, it has the boost, it's got another attack boost on top of that from the order up. Up. And so Ashton is put into a pretty rough situation where you could go for the substitute here. You could just try to get some damage done, but it's going to be a sub from Choppa's side just to keep that Dondozo extra safe. I feel like I've seen this board state before, maybe earlier on in the day with the Dondozo <laughs> and the sub. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong here, but uh, wave You crash. did. <laughs> I, I, I know, I know. It was, it was way early. And we, we all just, did. We, we all had to that no, but just trying to hit a little bit into damage unfortunately not being a very effective hit can't break through the substitute quite yet and this is where that leftover sets really comes into effect because that is just going to be a little bit of health here a little bit of health there and that adds up yeah, the Dondozo and the Tatsugiri on both of these teams. It was Chapa that played that mirror a little bit earlier on today in top 32. Uh, and he ended up being able to stall out the Dondozo versus Dondozo. Where this gets really tricky is that Chapa has more HP right now, has a substitute already set and ready to go. And Ashton really only has one option for recovery there if he wants to go for the rest and use that Chesto Berry right away. Especially because Chuppa's has looked pretty uh, bulky and then you get a chance to go for those attack boosts with the order up as well. You're going to be breaking the sub on Ashton's side very quickly as you get those attack boosts going. And with only having that one heal option, it gets to be really weird because you're not consistently hitting for this damage. You're not consistently being able to do so much. You're not consistently being able to hide and just heal up. So you're doing so little damage turn after turn. And then while well, Chapa gets to sit here behind the substitute and Fade will not hide behind it anymore, but it still was able to get so much help in that time. Yeah, I mean, at this point, the Dondozo from Chapa's side is going to be able to rotate through a few things here. Sub, you can protect again to be able to get the leftovers healing up. and. With how it stands right now, Ashton is just going to have to try to keep going for Earthquake and just doing as much damage as possible. But Chuppa is being a bit faster, is going to be able to get the sub up immediately in order for that to soak up the damage instead. And I like the idea of the rest Chestoary, but I feel like this is the situation here where the that sort of set on this Dondozo starts to really falter. This Earthquake, you're not doing enough damage. And it, sure, I mean, Order Up isn't necessarily doing the most either, but on Chapa Zen, at least being able to get those attack boosts, you're going to be able to get to a point where you can consistently break a substitute then and break Ashton's, and then things run out. So that is going to be the first match wrapped up here, seeing the writing on the wall.
Yeah, I mean, look at that. I think I think the problem with what happened here is that just Ashton having so much pressure with other Pokemon in the back, and then maybe Chuppa just realizing this is this is just a rough matchup all around. But or maybe not wanting to play through the Don Dozo because I think <laughs> in the Don Dozo versus Don Dozo, you might be a bit better off, but then realizing you don't have the pieces to put it back together at the end. But. Oh, hey, it comes down to timer too. And it's so true. with the group on it going down as well, I think true. there is a bit of an advantage there for Ashton if he wants to run out the clock and especially knowing how much longevity these Dondozo Tatsugiri duos can have. Getting that knockout so early when you had the iron, iron hands go for the close combat into the group on it left you with a good position to just get the win there. Yeah, making sure that you're not playing out even if because there are situations where even if you're okay in the Don Dozo part, if you're unable to really make anything happen by the time you're going to be reaching time and you're already down a Pokemon, it's really just not going to matter. Even if maybe you had an extra 10, 20, 30, 40 minutes, it could have been okay. So, you know what? Respectable. There is a limited amount of time for these players too in terms of everything going on. So you want to make sure you have a full set, make sure you're not taking it too far at a time. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just looking ahead for game number two, I think that turn one through three was very critical here for Ashton and Chapa, who's going to be able to get the first KO. Will that be able to snowball into a Dondozo Tatsugiri duo? And, and how would that matchup actually play out? Especially because once they're on the field, you can't switch. So you're stuck with the Dondozo Tatsugiri versus Dondozo Tatsugiri on both sides. So I, it comes down to the leads once again. Maybe you just play a bit more of an offensive game here. Chapa showed the versatility of these Dondozo Tatsugiri teams, even when it came down to the mirror, where he was able to put on some offensive pressure at the very beginning and preserve that Dondozo Tatsugiri for later. So we'll have to see whether or not he decides to bring both of them or not. I think what's really important in this too, and it's just a moment of realization going into this, but unaware the attack boosts are not actually really meaning anything. So you're not actually doing that damage. So it's just going to be a really tricky Even situation. Even with the sub, I keep forgetting that the sub doesn't actually stop unaware from, yeah. There, it has been a, a, long, a long day, day. <laughs> but unaware not doing the attack boost. That changes such a good amount because then being stuck on that detail, all of a sudden, having that extra Pokemon, not being able to get attack boost because of the fact that there's the unaware there, it does definitely le make things lean into Ashen's favor. Even if you only have that one recovery option, that one recovery option is just going to be so huge at that point. That's true. Especially when you're whittling down the timer, you just go ahead and get down the timer, you rest up back to full, Chesto goes off, and then you're all of a sudden in a much better position. But we're already seeing a switch on the board. Yeah, it's going to be that Tatsugiri, the cutest Tatsugiri out there coming out. And we got to see things go down this way in the first match with the Terrasilized Eel type into these Golden Goes, being able to deal this damage out. These do deal damage. These deal a good chunk of damage. And being able to put that offensive pressure right away is so good. Hence why both players are going for it. We also saw this just as a defensive terror type in game number one as well, where Chapa's Golden Go decided to go for the Shadow Ball into Ashton's Golden Go. So you're shutting off that super effective damage from removing that ghost typing from yourself. And the fake out as well, nice call here for Ashton to go ahead and switch in that Tatsugiri instead. And Shadow Ball, because it's not going to be hit a hitting for super effective, it won't take the KO, but it still does so much damage. And yet again, Ashen opting for that make it rain. A lot of damage onto the opposing end. Not enough to be taking down Palmut, but it does bring it down real low. Yeah, and so Palmut in this case, I'm kind of wondering what it's going to be able to do here for Chuppa. It's already very low. You use the terrestrialization onto the Golden Go in order to remove that ghost type from yourself. So I want to see if Chapa's going to make a switch here. Maybe try to save that Palma for later to get a Revival Blessing off. Especially, too, because of the fact that Ashton was favored just with the sheer Pokemon count. Having a Revival Blessing for later on could just be so huge. And you do want to make sure you're not putting yourself in a situation where you're essentially losing a Pokemon for, for free. But Tatsugiri, Tatsugiri, you get to see them with those Choice Scarves being able to go so fast and an Icy Wind into the Palma is going to be enough to take that down as well as the speed drop onto the opposing Golden Go. 
Yeah, speed drop is going to be really helpful here. You saw that Chapos was able to move first, so now Ashton's going to be able to fire off a single target, make it rain. So a huge knockout here, despite the fact that he used it before. So double knockout here, going on to Chapos' team. He's down to his final two Pokemon already. Yeah, and that is so big from the first match. It was one early KO for Ashton in the first match and already being able to go from there. So getting the double KO on that very first turn is insane. And considering what we got to see in the back the first time around, you can imagine how this is going to go. The Don Dozo, Tatsu, Yuri, and this point, the Pokemon count, definitely not in his favor. This would have to do so much. But even just the point at bringing a Don Dozo in for Ashton could spell danger. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking here too that honestly, just looking at the Dondozo, well, we talked about unaware not helping you with the attack boosts, right? Well, it's not going to care about the special attack drops either on this Golden Go. So you're kind of looking at maybe pivoting around, trying to get a little bit better of a position, saving that Golden Go for later. So you can also reset the choice specs. Just a reminder that Ashton does have access to Thunderbolt later, and Chuppa already used Terrestrialization. So he doesn't have the ability to switch that type on the Dondozo on his side. And even if you just, you can either go for KO or you can just go for the pure stall. Things are just yeah. not going to be working out in this scenario. We can talk about every which way to be taking down this Don Dozo, but it could just be the Jira time that's not on up his side, dealing just a little bit of damage. And I'm assuming next turn we might start to see some setups. Kind of to see a little bit here. Subs would be really good to see for both sides, but does Chuppa feel like the writing is on the wall already? Just gonna go ahead and just try to get set up here. And, and Chuppa knows that's two Chuppa knockouts. Knows. Doesn't want to play through the mirror. And Ashton, just like that, 2 0. We are one game closer to potentially having a Slitherwing try and make that oh so important <laughs> run in Knoxville. But no, well done by the players. And I mean, that's a tough situation to be in too, where you are willingly conceding the match because. Some people might be like, oh, play it out. But the thing is, is if you already know that it's going to be a lost cause, you're kind of just playing it out to play it out. There's not really much to be done in the situation. We were talking about the fact that Ashton has something wrapped because of Unaware on Dezozo in game one to where a one Pokemon advantage is going to get him that win. Well, a two Pokemon advantage is twice as good. That's twice as much of a, hey, you won this game more mm -hmm. than anything. Yeah, and so I think, it's, again, it's it's really tough to play out the Dondozo mirror, but the differences and the small differences on the team can really help out there. Um, and hey, Ashton also still preserved that golden go for later, so you never know if you got down to that scenario. But it was Dondozo's on the field and two knockouts already going in favor of Ashton, so writing was just on the wall there. Yeah, and that's the thing with the Dondozo mirrors as well. I mean, you can get these long, grindy games, but you have to be in the scenario for that long grindy game to be, even be happening in the first place and for neither player to really have an advantage too much going into that to where you want to play it out. Because yeah. if you're already lost in that situation, I mean, what's the, what's the point? It's, it's tough and, and it helps out too. I mean, Ashton moving on here to the grand finals yes. of Orlando. It's going to be Wolf versus Ashton, a rematch of the Massachusetts Regional 2015. I want to say finals. That's way back. It's it's way back, but that hey, was like eight years ago. But that hey, but that talks about the incredible veterancy and also experience that both of these players have. And going into that matchup, I think is going to be important because Ashton has proven he can play a highly positional game, and Wolf with the Parish Trap can also play a highly positioned game in order to have gotten to this point. And I'm intrigued to see how it's going to play out in finals because this Parish Song team has been making waves all day. And we were talking backstage on, well, what are the things that could be taking Wolf down, taking this Parish Song team down? And looking at both of the matches that we just saw, like both of the teams that we saw from Ashen and Chuppa, talking about the different points and either player going up against Wolf, I feel like would have been a really good match. Oh so yeah. We weren't gonna lose either way with whoever went to the finals, but I'm intrigued with a couple of different things on Ashen's team. Yeah, I mean, Ashton has a lot of surprises. We haven't gotten a chance to see the Roaring Moon yet. Whether or not that was even brought in the uh, for this match, I think is a really interesting point to maybe look at for later. Does the Tailwind help at all? Uh, do you have the ability to use Throw Chop for something? I mean, that's, that's what I have my eye on. Does Roaring Moon make an appearance? And can Ashton potentially pivot in a Throw Chop to be able to shut off the Parish songs? Well, especially to Ashton having played for so long. I mean, I'm sure Ashton's dealt with Parish Song at least once or twice in his VGC career. So 
definitely should know how to be playing against something of this sort. It's about whether you think you have the pieces on your team and how you're really going to be piecing that puzzle together to make sure you come out on top. Because honestly, Wolf has taken some losses in the tournament, but what we've seen on stream with this yeah. Parish Song team, it's looked kind of hopeless at times for the opponent. And that's just how the matchup even just goes out sometimes. Even Trailer was saying earlier, like, yeah, I've played against like every iteration of this Parish team. And it's frustrating when you lose <laughs> because when you're losing, you're just not playing the game. Yeah, I mean, we saw that happen to Emilio. We saw that happen in... To James. Like, to, to James. Like, yeah. it just... Every opponent that Wolf has faced so far, yeah, it's been it's been tough. I mean, Chongjun on stream was one of the players that was actually able to hand Wolf a loss yeah. with that team. And, uh, you know, Wolf, finding an answer to it, had a very similar matchup in top 32, was able to get through that. So yeah. he's, he's finding answers. He's finding the lines and he's finding the answers. Yeah, and it felt like, too, like... Even a couple of things in the match against Changjun so early on, it felt like the Parish song, when it was done right, was it then a hopeless match? And then when it was like put in an awkward situation that all of a sudden you're dying by your own song, like it's not necessarily the greatest. So just a little bit on positioning maybe for the opponent, but you have to have the tools to even be in that situation. And you only have six Pokemon. They're locked as of a long time ago. You might just not have the tools on your team. That's true. I mean, it, it can definitely get tough there, but we're going to have to wait and see what's going to happen in this grand finals. It's definitely going to be uh, an incredible match as we've had just honestly all weekend, some great games to watch and a lot to learn as we've taken a look at how Series 2 has developed and just all the different interactions. Like, there's still a lot to cover. So, yes, maybe we missed the unaware stuff during that, for like, the match earlier, but hey, Hey, could Listen. you say we were unaware? <laughs> we were unaware. We were unaware of unaware. <laughs> also because unaware is just an incredibly interesting ability to look at. And just when there's so many other layers of Pokemon that's active that you have to keep track of, it's, it's tough. It is. I mean, there is so much going on, not just for us, but for the players as well. Everyone that's out exactly. there competing, there's so much that's being tracked at some point. But hey, you know, the players know what's up. That's what it matters at the end. They, <laughs> that is they, what they matters know. at the end. <laughs> yeah, they are aware. <laughs> they are aware of unaware. Hey, if we can't laugh at ourselves, you know. Listen, I, it's just, you gotta have fun with Pokemon. Fun. If you're not having fun, why are you playing? Yeah, honestly, I mean, you want to come out here, you want to compete, you want to be the best, but ultimately, if you're not really just enjoying that experience, at least in fine. some sort of capacity, like what's, what's, what's up? Yeah, what's up, right? When are you gonna play Terror Raids? When are you gonna play Seven Star hey, Raids? I, going on like stuff that you don't know, <laughs> I did not play nearly enough Scarlet Violet VGC before showing up at San Diego, and you would not believe the amount of stuff I got away with just because I did not know what was going on. I'm like, I'm just gonna click the super effective button. They're like, you shouldn't have done this because I have all this. I'm like, well, it worked, so. It works. Uh, hmm. Sometimes simple VGC is the best VGC. You yeah, know? sometimes you just gotta stick to a game plan and, and hope that it, it works out for the best. So then, is there any moment from today, or even this weekend, that's been like the favorite moment for you? Oh, I do have one. I think it's just honestly the way that, I guess it's several. Watching Wolf lock down opponents or calling switches correctly and even just going for like some of the safest plays, I'm, I'm looking at the one where James Evans had switched in Tyranitar. And so while Wolf was still covering for options, right? It was the heal pulse at the end that was really great to see pay off. Like there's still the right play to do at the time, but it looks like a fantastic read just given the circumstances yeah. of the knockout that the Palafin got and then also the fact that it could recover some HP. Oh, that was a good one. I'd have to say for myself, as much as we like memed on the Don Dozo mirror, I'm thinking of like the very first match of the day. Not the first game between Chapa and Mushan, but the second one. Yeah. Because the first one was very stally. It's just showing off, yeah, this is a Don Dozo mirror. This is what happens. Like, haha, -ha, we know that this is going on and dragging on forever. But the second game. Seeing the aggression from the players, especially Chuppa, making sure that key KOs were taken. Yeah. And making sure that, hey, going on into the second game, I'm going to make sure my opponent's Hatsugiri is gone and the Revival Blessing onto his own to bring it back, I think was just really yeah. well done. So I'll have to, I'll have to even though it's a non I'm going to put that one down <laughs> as my favorite. But we do have an interview lined up in our lounge over with Thaw, so we're going to send over to that.
Thank you so much, guys. I'm joined by not one, but two finalists here in Orlando. I'm going to sit down and chat with them both before we uh, get into the finals. So you get a little bit of a, I guess, a rest. You get to enjoy my comfy seats, um, but I'm sure both of you are, are feeling it. Uh, initial feelings going into this one uh, from both of you. I feel good, you know. Um, uh, I, I, in order to get to this point, uh, I had to in top 32 play my like the same team basically as my first Swiss loss. Then in top 16, I had to play my the, the same team as my second Swiss loss. And then in top eight, I had to play Amelia, who was not only undefeated in the tournament thus far, he's also beaten me the last two times we played, including a top cut of a regional not too long ago. So, um, and of course James Evans, reigning national, you know, North American international champion. So to make it to finals, of course I got another great opponent um, going up next, but I'm. I'm I'm really happy to have made it this far and with a team that uh, is very near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, same. Like, my, I, I said this when I was on earlier. I thought I was done in top 32. I, sat I heard down, you talking about yeah, it. You were I like, it's a like, Swiss loss, it's over. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, it was a team I knew and he had weird sets. So I was just like, my run's over in top 32. So to be here, um, especially versus you, it's like so awesome. This is what I want. Like, yeah. I am, um, I, I've been like a fan of your play for a long time. I appreciate you know, that. Yeah, I uh, I really like your high level stuff. So I always love getting to play you. Like even when I get even We've when played I lose, a lot, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> we'll when I lost to your like Klefki Zygarde, remember that? I have buried that memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, let's I, forget about I that. Have, I, I lost buried. though, so like I don't you know, remember that part. <laughs> yeah, I, I endorse you burying the memory of Klefki. Let's yeah, take yeah. A, a quick reminder. Of course, but yeah, it feels great last... to be here, and play against you. Yeah, let's take a quick reminder of the last couple games for anyone who may be tuning in a little bit late and maybe sleeping in on the enjoyable Sunday. We can look at your bracket runs all the way down from from top 16. You already kind of alluded to it, but yeah, you, you, you didn't exactly have an easy one, Wolf. You, yeah. uh, you, you took some challenges there. Well, we both haven't dropped a game. Oh, two and oh, yeah. not Carson? No? Oh, Carson, shoot. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> forget <laughs> that. I didn't say you tried to hype this sorry, up. I'm sorry, I'm trying to hype it up. You haven't dropped a game, right? That's true. Dang, okay, well now I got pressure here. <laughs> okay, so that, there's already one stat for oh, everyone at shoot. home, right? It's yeah. Like, uh, 2 0 2 0 2 0 2 0 The blemish, Ashton. I know, sorry I about know. that one. <laughs> it's on me, too. I misplayed. A 2 1. Come on. I know. Come on. It's, it's, not, it's not really on, is it? But yeah, you guys have both played fantastic players. You've got to be feeling uh, pretty great coming into this. So uh, looking back, you know, let's look even further back than this bracket and, and throw it out. Obviously, you and you, we were all talking about it a little bit before. Uh, you guys have played in-person tournaments. You've been in top tables a lot. Oh, quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, let's let's hear the record uh, between you guys. <laughs> Ashton, I'll let you do the honors. I'll, I'll say it. <laughs> so in-person, like totally not, not online, in-person events, it is Zero and eight. <laughs> Every but, time. But, 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 but if we but include there's an outline. You gotta you gotta give me this though. In the Players' Cup Invitational, the first one where it was like the, the 12 invited players or whatever, yeah. I got that win. That's right. I beat him one time. That's it's the most recent tour. time. You know what matters? Right. It's the most recent That's win. That's true. We so we are one then. and eight. One and eight. One, yeah. one and eight. So yeah. That's it's a little bit one-sided, but uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I feel great. You it, see, yeah. It's also happened in regional finals, right? You've played yeah, yeah, in yeah. two regional finals. Uh, 2015, Wolf, you were playing. Uh, Parastrap. Uh, yes, Parastrap. Yes, yeah, so my, my old reliable, which it's, it's very funny because it's not like I've brought Parastrap to a ton of regionals and like the two times I made finals or the two times I played Ashton. It's like I've brought it to exactly two regionals. I got first in the last one. I'm in finals of this one. Ashton was my opponent both times. Yep. Um, and the other time we played was 2018 Charlotte regional finals where uh, um, it was, I had like a Charizard X and that, that was very team. fun, yeah. Yeah, that was a good one, um, yeah. Well, the funniest part about that 2015 one where we played in finals. You got you a triple perished. protect on me, I remember well, this. Not even that, yeah. I was using your team. Oh. I was using the team you brought to the event prior because that was oh. before I knew how to build balance and oh. I literally took your team. Right. And I, I changed like one Pokemon. And uh, that's why you had such a lock on it. Yeah. I couldn't do anything. I yeah, was like, I remember being like, it was a very one. Like my top four was really hard. My top eight was really hard. And then I saw the matchup for five. You had like no. There was no. There shot. was like no ghost types. Like yep. yeah, Scrafty just ate everybody. So I yeah, had, like, four physical attackers. Yeah, it was, it was, it was real pretty. Rough. It was pretty brutal. Not yeah. gonna lie. It was. It was a dark time. It was a dark time. We, we were very different people and, and different players. Uh, <laughs> long time ago. Uh, obviously, you guys going into it. I don't want to start anything. I don't want to you know stir the pot. But I am getting my spoon out and ready to go. <laughs> Do you guys have any words for each other before you sit down for finals? What I'll say is that I have a lot of respect for Ashton as a player. Um, I, you know, it's like you never know what you're, you know, when you make it far in a tournament, you never know what your opponent's going to be like. And so playing against Ashton, like obviously the record's pretty one sided, but this is, it's like anything can happen. Um, I would not be surprised at all to see Ashton uh, be the regional champion. And I think if he takes it, then it's well deserved. Like you've had a really hard schedule as well. You've had a really like tough day and you've been playing really well. So um, I, I can, you know, I'm going to do my best to win, of course, and I would love to, you know, win, but I can, you know, there's a little less pressure on me because. 
because I feel like you'll you'll be a deserving champion if, if I don't make it any further. That's exactly how I feel. Yeah, I'm like, you know, if there was somebody I didn't like, which that's a very small list, but yeah. you know, it was there is a list of people that I would be like, no, there's no way. Yeah. But yeah, like no, I'm I'm just a huge fan of seeing you play. And always getting to play you, I'm just like, this is this is like you got the front row seat, you know? <laughs> Obviously I'm like under fire, but like I am right there in the you know in the action. Yeah. And uh, the only thing is like this is this is making me feel better about the uh, 2019 US NAS where I lost to um, Jevons uh, and I couldn't make it to face you. I really uh, wanted to, I really wanted to, but yeah. I only got a top eight there. That's right, um, yeah. And yeah, so that was that was kind of like crushing, but now we're here. So this is, to me, this is, feels nice. Feels like a little run back where yeah. I can finally get that shot. Um, but yeah, huge respect. Like you're, you're one of my favorite it. players to watch. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Good natured. I appreciate that. <laughs> Before we go, Wolf, there's something I need to address with you because I spoke to Ashton earlier. I haven't had the opportunity to speak with you. I yet. know. You've been keeping uh, me silent. Uh, well, now I'm going to propose something to you. Oh no. I want to see how you're feeling. Ashton I made a deal. Ashton made a deal with me. Okay. He, he shook on it, uh, and he said if he wins this regional, uh, he is going to pick up for Knoxville. Slitherwing. <laughs> so, I, I said this in top 16. Yeah. So it was like a little earlier on, but I right. still stick to it. I still stand so, by it. We show. I have an idea, and I want to get your read on this. Okay. If you take down the regional, will you attend your next regional with Iron Moth for me? He's trying to make us the oh, opposite side. I'm going to decline your offer, and the reason is I played so many moths. I played a Slitherwing, I played two Iron Moths, and I played at least three Volcaronas. Like, I have had so much moth. I have, like, moth poisoning for being ex sure, overexposed to moths. But surely at this point, I can't believe I'm using Screamtail, which is, like, a very yeah, niche, yeah. like, nobody respected it. And you're like, hey, Iron Moth, it's like a meta mon. Can you please use it? So, yeah. No, I, I mean, I, we I, we could double down. I, well, I'll, 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 I'm not going to promise because, you know, I, I, I don't want to, you know, um, kind of hinder my chances of winning. But I, I, what okay. I will promise you is I will look at If I win this regional, I will seriously consider it. I'm not going to promise using it, but I will I will build a team. I will test it, and I will try to make it work for me. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, yeah. If, That's if, fair. I'll take I, that. I'll take by that. the way, I'm getting a new moth team that yeah. I am going to steal from you both. Okay. Uh, go I, see, I see. I yep. see. I see. Oh, the, I see the baby. motivation. You think I'm doing this just for You could do all three. You could do triple moth and then triple tusk. Yeah. That's my yeah, secret yeah, yeah. team. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll build that at some point. I really, I'm not condoning this. I'm so <laughs> sorry. Like, I cannot allow this to, to go unchecked. Uh, maybe try it at home. Uh, if you get mixed results, let us know. But, but gents, I really appreciate your time. I know you're probably itching to get to the finals. So uh, I'll let you get sat down, get seated. Good luck to both of you. Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, we'll see how this one goes. So stick around. We're going to get the guys ready to play the finals here in Orlando.